Hey everyone, so for this video we're going to go over the problem binary tree right side view. I figured this would be a good problem to go over because I haven't done any tree based problems on this channel yet. So hopefully this is helpful. So the description says given a binary tree, imagine yourself standing on the right side of it. Return the values of the nodes you can see ordered from top to bottom. So in this example, we're returning 1, 3, and 4 because they are the right side view at every level. But keep in mind, this doesn't mean that the right child is being returned in the output. You can have a left child that is the rightmost node in that level. So just something to keep in mind. So let's jump over to the whiteboard. I'll show you guys how to solve this. We can solve this problem in two different ways. The first way is using a depth first search and the second way is a breadth first search. So I'm gonna be implementing the breadth first search and to do that, we're going to need a queue, right? And inside this queue, we are going to store tree nodes. So initially, we're going to have our root node inside of our queue in order to start our BFS, right? So we can put one inside of this queue and then we can just cross out our root node to show that we have already added it inside of our queue. A couple other things we're going to need. We're going to need a list, which is going to hold all of our rightmost node values. So we can have another result, and this will be a list, right? And we're going to build that as we are going through our BFS. And then a couple other variables we're going to need. We're going to need a size variable. And this is going to tell us how many times we need to pull from the queue in order to perform our level order traversal, right? So our size initially will be 1 because we only have one node inside of our queue. So size is 1. And then we're also going to have a variable. We can just call this i. And this can start at 0. And what this will do is this will just iterate from 0 to size minus 1. And this will just be a loop telling us that we need to pull from our queue that many times. So the way we know when we are at the rightmost node in that level is when i is equal to size minus 1. So when i is equal to size minus one, this is how we know we have a rightmost, uh, a rightmost node in that level. And so now we just need to pull from our queue up until i is equal to our size. Since i is zero based and then size is not zero based, right? So we're gonna pull from our queue, we pull the one, and then i gets increased to one, right? But since the number that we pulled off, i was 0 before, and when i was equal to size minus 1, that means we need to add that number into our result. So 1 gets added, right? And then we need to add the children of this node that we just pulled into the queue. So 2 will get added into our queue, and then 3, right? And then we just perform the same logic. So our new size is now two, we have two nodes inside of our queue, and i goes back down to zero. And so we're gonna iterate up until size minus one, right? So we're gonna pull from our queue, and we're gonna increase i, so that goes to one. And then we need to add the children of our node, as long as they're not null, right? So four and five will be added. So four, five. And then we're going to pull from our queue again. So this gets removed. And since we are at i is equal to size minus one, that means this value needs to be added into our result, so three. And then i gets increased to and that means we're done. When i is equal to size, we are done iterating. And so we do this. Uh, we also need to add in the child of node 3. So 
uh, node 6 will be added, right? And then after that, we're going to continue iterating over our queue. So our new size is 3. And i goes back down to 0, right? And so we're going to pull from our queue once again. This gets changed to 1. Pull from our queue again. There's no child for node 4 or 5, right? So we don't have to worry about that. i gets changed to 2. And since i is now equal to size minus 1, that means this next upcoming value is going to be added to our result. So 6 will be added, right? And then we're going to pull once more. And we're going to add the child. So we have 7, right? And then i will get changed to 3. And since i is equal to size, we're done iterating over that level. So we do the same thing. Our size is now 1 because we only have the node 7 in our queue. i get set back down to 0. Since i is equal to size minus 1, node 7 gets added into our result. We pop from our queue, right? This gets changed to 1. And that's it. We're done. So our final result would be 1, 3, 6, 7. So hopefully that was a useful example to understand the algorithm. So let's actually implement it in the code now. All right, so we need to return a list of integers, right? And we're given a tree node root. So let's initialize our result list. And we should also just uh, handle the edge case that if the root is null, right? So if our root is null, then we can just return an empty result list. And so for a BFS, we need a queue, right? So let's initialize that. It's going to be a queue of tree nodes. And to start our BFS, we need to add our root inside the queue. We know it's not null at this point, so we can just say queue.add root, right? And then we can say while our queue is not empty, we will continue pulling from our queue. So now we need to initialize that size variable that we talked about. So we can say int size is equal to whatever the queue size is at this point, And then we're going to loop up to that size and pull. So we can say for int i, i starts at 0, right? And we're going up to size minus 1, right? So i is less than size. And then when we are inside of this for loop, we need to pull from our queue. So we can say tree node, node equals queue.pull. And so now we need to do that check that we talked about. When i is equal to size minus 1, that means that we are at the rightmost node in that level. So we could say if i is equal to size minus 1, then we can say result.add node.val. And then now it's just like a regular BFS. All we need to do is add our left and right child as long as they're not null. So we can just say if node.left is not equal to null, q.add node.left. If node.right is not equal to null, q.add node.right. And finally, when we come out of this while loop, all we need to do is say return our result. So that's actually it for implementing the BFS. So let's just make sure that this runs. And there we go. Cool. So next, let's jump into the time and space complexity of our BFS solution. The time complexity is going to be big O of n, where n is the number of nodes that we have in our tree. Since we're performing a BFS, we have to touch every node a single time. And then our space complexity is also going to be big O of n, 
but n in this case comes from the largest level that we have in our queue. So that is it for this problem. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Let me know if there's any other types of problems you want me to solve. I'm really open to doing any one of them. So yeah, peace.